Shalom, balance, paradise, righteousness, all back in the lab. And as you can see, I've got a returning guest with me, uh, the one and only Liam Bellator fighter, father, husband, mentor, so many other different things in between. Uh, welcome back to the broadcast, Liam. How's it going? Mate, thanks for having me. It's all going well. Um, as could be expected anyway, but yeah, it's all going well. Excellent, excellent. So it, it's been a while, man. It's been a while. It's been almost, I guess, almost about two two odd years since last time we spoke, right? Maybe even, <laughs> probably even when three years. We... No, nah, was it three? No, nah, not been three, is it? I'm I think... sure it has, man. I'm sure, yeah, it's been a while, man. 50... Did you speak for me for the build up for the um, Phil Davis? Phil Davis yeah. So that so Phil Davies fight is coming up a year and a half now. It was okay. April two thousand nineteen. Shit. Okay. Time. See, with this zombie apocalypse stuff, it's it's like I can't even get a, a grasp on time frames like, and periods now. This last fucking since March, everything's just been like it's now fucking November. So yeah. like, it was yesterday. It was March. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how it's gone. Like. Definitely, definitely. So let let let's 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 pick up there. Let let's actually pick up there in regards to, and then we'll go back. How has it been for you since since March? Obviously, because you was in a different a different location in March. So, you know, what was it like over there? Well, um, so March, I, I actually flew back to England beginning of March. Um, okay. And, and I was I was going to come back here for a couple of months, and then and then I was going to go back to Hawaii, yeah, uh, for the, before the birth of my son. But when I landed in in England, I got to my mate's house, and then the news came on, and I didn't really know too much about. I mean, I'd heard COVID, but it wasn't as big. Uh, it, it wasn't that big, to be honest. With you. I, was, I didn't really know what the what they were talking about. And I landed in my mate's house, and they're talking about this COVID, and I'm like, what? And then they were like. Yeah, you'll be the worst case because you've just travelled across the world. And I was like, well, how bad is it? Then I watched the news, and then it was like, right, um, it's Spain was closing down, France was about to shut down. I was like, fuck. I was like, you know what? I, was like, I think I better fucking go back to America. So I booked a flight, and the next day I flew back to Hawaii. Right, two days later they changed it so there was no flights coming in from Europe, and then wow. the day after that they changed it, no flights from England. So there I was in, in America in March. My <laughs> visa are about to run out in August and there's no flights. Everything's been locked down. I was, I'd rather be locked down in Hawaii than, uh, than away from my family. So I, I wanted to be with my family. Mm. It, so I went back home. But, um, but lockdown itself was, I mean, as you say, I live on the island of paradise. Like, exactly. The, the, the isolation wasn't a problem. Um, we just, if you wanted to go out to the beach, we found a very fucking isolated beach out in the middle of nowhere and just chilled. Okay. But, um, uh, so, okay. So you obviously, as, as, as we've, we've kind of vividly of sorts painted a, a picture Hawaii, as soon as anyone even thinks of that place, it just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, as you say, it's paradise. So logistically. It, it then, but you know what, right? Okay. So I'm going to jump in there. It is paradise, right? But then it's also very hood. Like there's homeless people. It's it's uh, okay. there's a lot of tents at the side of roads. Um, there's a lot of poverty there as well. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but I think they they the, the homeless will if they get a flight they fly out to Hawaii and then they get one flight. Okay. So, <laughs> That's their big ticket. If you're gonna be homeless, why not be in the sunshine? You know what I mean? This is it. This is it. So let's get back to the the, the logistic side of it then. So obviously in Europe, England, and America. There was lots of issues in regards to like going shopping, you know, just getting basic stuff. So, how was that on a smallish kind of island? It it wasn't actually that bad. I mean, like because we wasn't allowed out, right? So basically, we would like ration where we was going and how we'd spend our days. So a, a day out for us would be down to the food food land. <laughs> take the kids in the car, and then one of us would go into shops all balaclava up and all sorts masked up and then just go do the shopping and then, and then come out but that was us taking the kids out for the day like it, it really was it was it was tough on them because they used to run around all over the place so then when they're in the house all the time and just but we, 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 we did 
I tell you what, did good good did come from it. We spent a lot of good quality time together. Nice. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm taking from it. We was and, locked away. Uh, it was just us as a family, and I, I, I fucking loved it. To be honest with you, no one yeah. else around. It was yeah. just us. And it sounds very much like you was, as you say, you was maximizing the time. So he was using the opportunities for a, a what would be a potentially mundane food run you were taking the children along and you know trying to make the yeah. most of a, of a you know a pretty strange and crazy situation exactly my missus would go out she'd leave me in the car with the kids she'd come back and i'd have the music blaring and we'd be shouting and screaming and dancing <laughs> around the car <laughs> so we have fun we have fun no matter what like if we're in a car in a car park or if we're on the beach like it's yeah it's what it's all about you know what i mean uh, carpe diem seize the day seize the day any opportunity definitely okay all right um and as you say the uh, children wise it, it's it, it hasn't been the easiest time for them so on a sort of education level how did how did all of that kind of stuff sort of no, work i mean uh, I, I, ju I jumped right into the homeschooling thing right so i had things set up for fury my, my, my daughter she's, she's six so I was doing a lot of um, a lot of her schoolwork with her and uh, and setting up. Just we had loads of them, like exercise books. So she'd have school, and then we'd have, we'd go out, and then we'd come back, and we'd do a bit more school. And she loved science. I loved science. Loved geography. So yeah, it was. It, I I really got into the the homeschooling aspect of it. Which is a surprise. <laughs> I, I guess. Like <laughs> well, tell me about it. I think you know, <laughs> in our era, going through uh, you know school in the UK was a very uh, trying situation. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, so this way, I'm 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 taking so I'm doing it all over again, and I and I get to help her and and. And just yeah. go over bits and pieces. It's nice refreshing, you know what I mean? Definitely. I was just going to add to that. I mean, I, I guess you learnt a little bit more extra kind of brushing up on your sort of geographical knowledge skills and some of the uh, periodic yeah. tables. And I guess, which did you go? Did you go that far with science-wise? No, she's six years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to ease them into it. What the hell is this? I know. What comes after this? Mate, I don't know. <laughs> we'll build up to that. I just did the where are the countries in the world. <laughs> it, well, no, that's good. It's a starting part. And to be fair, I think geography is a underlooked part of people's um, development in regards to study. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know yourself when you go to American yes. stuff and you speak to Americans, they're clueless in regards to anything outside of America. <laughs> I mean, yeah. in, in yeah. some I mean, cases. Well, luckily enough, my missus, <laughs> my missus well travelled. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But most of them, they haven't got a clue where anywhere is like. But yeah, so that's. Uh, but she, my 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 daughter's been in what twenty six countries, I think. Wow. Something like that. So she she's she's well travelled as well. That passport yeah. is well tatted off <laughs> with them stamps. Twenty six. That that's a nice and. Yeah. I, I very much yeah. encourage that. I mean, trustfully, she, in her... Six. This is it, and only being six, growing up and getting into a young, you know, young adult, a young woman, trustfully, she can maintain and, util, you know, utilise those experiences and as an older person, still maintain and actually get to go to those okay. other places and stuff. It can really... Um, I think doing yeah. that can yeah. really Definitely. help... I think it helps people understand different cultures, understand the dynamics of people as well. Definitely opens your eyes up. So then, so then keeps this not quite enough. Yes. Yeah, yes. Definitely that. And it's, I, I think, life then experiences, mate. Totally, totally. I mean, it's good to do the, the, the book smart stuff, you know, to get the, the, the education, but actually going out, I mean, vacations are excellent tools for children. And um, if they're done in the right way, you know, exposing them yeah. to new places, new languages, new foods, tastes, sensations. Um, it's all part of, you know, creating that, that, that young being yeah. who's going to be an adult, man. Yeah. We're still working on the food. Like... <laughs> Is that the yeah. challenge? Is the food People thing. Have young children, no. It's just chicken, chicken nuggets, and then. But now we've we've got to eaten a little bit more now. Well, let's try this. You know, oh, I like that. And watch that. And then she's trying different foods. So, I uh, think... and then the other two are just still. One of them is still on chicken nuggets. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, that, that's a children thing. I think you know, you are you, you, your child or children will either love a variety yeah. of food or they're just stuck on one type of food for a period of time, and you know, they'll exactly. just grab it. Yeah. Go on to dinner. Nuggets, nuggets, <laughs> oh, nuggets, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And chips. <laughs> Just yeah. not forget that, dear. <laughs> he loves his, the one who loves the sweet potato fries. Wow. Well, that's yeah. healthy. Complex exactly. carbs. They, they, exactly. Yeah, they eat. They eat healthy. Yeah, man. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. So, okay, let's let's get back to you. Let's get back to you. So, last time we spoke, we was gearing up for uh, Mr. Wonderful to do the thing. And, um, yeah. you know, take it away. <laughs> what, 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 what was your thoughts on the fight? And, and, and... So I watched the fight back. I, it was a good few months until I watched it back. Mm-hmm. And I thought, it wasn't actually a bad fight, to be honest. No, with it wasn't. Um, I, I, I worked so fucking hard for that fight, right? It was the hardest fight, the hardest training camp I'd had. And, and I was in great shape. Um, I think my problem was, right, because of la- the last time we fought, I still had the memory of him taking me down and just fucking laying on me for five rounds, right? Mm-hmm. So I think I respected him too much on the takedowns, right? So I was a little bit hesitant. And then when I come to the third round, when my jaw was already broken, it broke, that broke in the second round. So when I, when I went back, I went, when I went out in the third, I was like, right, I'm just going to let him have it. Yeah, and he took me down. He couldn't hold me down. I got straight back up again, uh, and then I realised like, but I realised too late. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My broke, my jaw was already broke. Before I realised like this, this guy, I was finishing that fight in the third round. That's what yeah, I was yeah, planning yeah, on yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that fucking, he threw a jab up. It wasn't even a hard jab, right? But my mouth was open, and as he mm-hmm. hit it, my jaw went backwards. My tooth came up, and I, I could no longer close my mouth. Well, that fucking shot oh my god even when i watched the fight back i turned it off because i heard myself oh, oh man i didn't need to watch i knew how that i knew how that ended i didn't yeah. need to watch anymore but yeah it was like electric shock went from my up to my brain and down my body like i've never felt pain like like this before i was yeah. just like please stop 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 <laughs> I don't even, even grab my face. Like, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, that I, I don't get paid enough to get this hurt this much. This yeah, is yeah. it. And, and as you say, usually that kind of um, light jab would be nothing to you, but based upon your mouth I being know, open. I've them all day long. But yeah. that, oh my God. But it, it was the kick. It was the kick to the face that did it when I, when I was getting up. And I, and I know I, I do all the time. It was like, pick your hands up when you're getting up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could take the fucking shot to the face. Well, not this just time. Just prove that we can't. So pick your fucking hands up when you get yeah. up next time, right? Guard your grill, Liam. You got to guard your grill, man. <laughs> yeah. Six months, dude. They fucking did the first surgery. So I went to um, I went to Disneyland Paris the day after, right? Because I promised I promised my kids that I'd take them to Disneyland, right? So I was yeah. there. My jaw was all like, oh, I couldn't mm-hmm. talk. They'd given me some painkillers, so I was loaded up on them, and I was going around um, Disneyland. Come six o'clock, I was folding in half watching this fucking um, frozen live oh, show that we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they were like, oh, what, what rides do you want to go on that? I said, please, can I just go back to the hotel? <laughs> so, and then we flew down to South California, and then I had a surgery, right? So I had the first surgery, was nine hours long. Hey, so, Glenn, before we get into the, the nine-hour surgery, which is flipping wow. Yeah. After, so, so the fight ends. You've got a brain oh, yeah, yeah, draw, yeah. right? What yeah. the fuck happens after? Like, you're in crazy pain. Like, what are they giving you? Oral morphine or like what? Oh, no. So I went to, um, so we went to the doctors, right? And we were there for fucking ages. And uh, like, I was like, what, what is going on? Then okay, I was like, they're like, we're just seeing if the x-ray, if the jaw's broken. I was like, the jaw's not broken. I was like, let's give me, let me go home. Like, you can't do anything. And they were like, just, just be patient. Then they came through with the x-ray and they were like, your jaw is well broken. <laughs> Okay, so but because I was in California, it was ve- and I lived in Hawaii, like it was very difficult. So I was trying to phone up um, doctors' surgeries in in Hawaii to try and book an appointment, right, for yeah. for surgery, and uh, they were all like asking for the insurance information. Then it was all very cagey, and they were like, "Well, I, I don't know." And then I could have flew back to Hawaii, 
and it could have been another week before I had surgery. But I'd already sorted with a doctor in California to do the surgery on Monday. So I was like, phoning him back. I said, listen, mate, I said, let's do the, 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 the surgery in Cali. So then I, had, so I was there in California for, a, I think it was an extra week. And then I was flying back to Hawaii, yeah. backwards and forwards for six weeks. So that, that was when he did the surgery. It was nine hours of surgery. And then six weeks of me going backwards and forwards. Then he decides to tell me, he's like, oh, something went wrong. It didn't take. I need to go back in again. So I was like, oh, what, what does this mean? So in two weeks' time, I was due to go back into surgery. Now, so the surgery he did, he was able to go in through my mouth this way, right? So that was the nine-hour one. Took a little bit longer than he thought. So now the second time he went, it was 12 hours, right? He had to cut here, what? pull my face back, and go in this way, what? right? Yeah, dude. Like I woke up, man. My arms had been strapped to my sides, right? I woke up, my elbow, it looked as though my bicep had slid down to my elbow. It didn't even look like an elbow anymore. What? I was in pain. And all the nurse did was just laugh at me. A <laughs> big, tough guy like you in pain like that. What? I was like, listen, I, I, I'm hurting. I couldn't even talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. At me, like, so did they have the why you shot as well? Your jaw shut or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my jaw was wired shut for six months straight. Fuck. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it was, yeah, so they, 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 my jaw was wired for six months. Now, I thought the first surgery, okay, so I thought I'd be wired up for three months and sound, I can go I'll get it done. And I was getting married in October. Mm. So I thought, yeah, I'll be, I'll be fine. Well, then he does the second surgery. He only pulled the wires out of my mouth a week before my wedding. Shit. I couldn't even open my mouth. You know the bit where they feed the... They feed yeah, the, the, yeah. The mouth, right? Cake. I, I couldn't open up my mouth. Like, I was like this, and she's putting it in my face, and she's going everywhere. I said, my mouth don't open. The, 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 the food, anyone who got married, they know about the food cost the most in the, in the wedding, right? Indeed. I didn't get to eat my fucking dinner. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, so my, uh, the, I've looked at the wedding pictures. My smile is all like... Uh, I didn't even know how to smile anymore, you know? Hey, Liam, the, the ones I've seen on, on your Instagram look beautiful still, so don't even treat me. Ah, thank you, man. Thank you. But, yeah, so, I mean, it was there's, there's, there's been a lot. And then, obviously, right when I was just about to get ready, then COVID kicks in. I was just about to go to the gym and start training again. Then all the gym's fucking closed down. So it's yeah. Like, mm. Yeah. Mm. It's been rough. It's been rough. Uh, yeah. But you know what? We have to make the most of the best of a shitty situation. So... Well, let it, let's get into that then. So you you've mentioned you've you've utilized the time well, um, building and um, fortifying the family bonds and stuff. So what else have we been doing to to uh, to in regards to growth and development and and moving forward in these crazy times? So I'm 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 actually stuck in England right now. Um, visa uh, sorting visas out, but because of COVID, everything's all closed down. So. I'm here for for a while, so I've um I started working at a gym. One of my friend is, it runs a gym over here, so it's boxing in there. Um, it's a fully weights gym, like real good, real good gym. But now we I'm running a, a jiu-jitsu program upstairs. Excellent. So uh, Magiri grappling and uh, submission and grappling has now been born. Um, soon to be MMA uh, in my hometown of Kings Lynn. So I'm now able to teach. I think I'll have. 14, 15 students in the last yeah. couple of weeks as well. That's so. excellent. That is. Yeah. I will so, put. Uh, I will put. Shoot me all the the, the information. I'll make sure I put uh, all of the information in, in the in the description below. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do. Um, but yeah. So I mean, like I say, you've got to make the, the best out of a bad situation. And, and you know, I mean, I could. I, I, I'm able to talk now again. Um, I'm able to, to to train. I'm able to roll a little bit more than what I was five months ago. Mm -hmm. so now it's now things are started slowly starting to get back together but i mean we've got all this shit craziness going on i just can't fucking buy into it you know what i mean like you have to still do what you're going to do yes you sit around you can't see this person you can't see that person but you need to you, you still got to find a way of, of getting around this you know what i mean we've got to live we we 100 percent do um and you know it's it's very confusing to even the smartest person with the conflicting information, the nonsensical information and rules, quote unquote yeah. rules, which are being put into place. Uh, the this this magic number of six, which is being 
I know. It's like so. You're telling me this virus is 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 that smart that yeah. it, it will only go for seven and above. <laughs> like, exactly. It waits for the school kids outside the school gate. Yeah. And, then, and then by ten o'clock, it's it's just resting for the night now. You know. Just chilling. Oh, okay. It's fucking ridiculous. Like everything, everything is just stupid. It's it's turned upside down, and unfortunately, it's 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 caused a lot of division within people because you've got That's a lot of people. Part. This is the thing: you've got a lot of people, you know. Um, bless them, you know. They've bought into this hook, line, and sinker, and they think that they're the police, and that they can yeah. walk around the streets and say, "You haven't got a mask on. What are you yeah. doing? You Put can't mask do that." Like- yeah. You're wearing, if you're wearing a mask, what the fuck is it going to do with you? Like, leave the other person alone. That's their fucking business. You, know? you, you're wearing a mask. You do your thing. You know. I've seen that. It's the that I've seen loads of people running around, pointing and shouting at people. And yeah. wear your mask. Do this. Do. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck, man? Chill. Like, yeah. they're fucking miles away from you doing their thing. You do your thing. Then that should, that's just all that should matter. Exactly. They're done. It, it, done. Yeah. You, this is it. And. It's it's very unfortunate. Trustfully, the, you know their eyes will be opened. Um, and 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 again, if it doesn't, if their eyes aren't open, just do you protect you? If you feel that that little plus that little piece of cloth is going to protect you, then then just do that. Stay away from people. Do you so? For me personally, you know, one of the good things that for, for me that's come out of this, <clears throat> What's that? especially at the start. I mean, I'm. <sighs> I'm not antisocial, but when I'm in when I'm out shopping and stuff, I hate with a passion people being all around me and stuff. So if I'm queuing, I don't expect to be able to smell and, and you know the person behind yeah. me kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. in that respect, I'm like, great, you know, at least you know they've got little stickers, people can you know ob- observe your your you know some some space and give you some personal some you know yeah. um, distance. Um, and then the other thing was the the lack of traffic. I was yeah. able to navigate around so so easy, especially being obviously you know in Birmingham and stuff. It's yeah, it, it, it's challenging to say the least. But we, when COVID hit March April, I could literally use the motorway. I could go on the motorway. There's yeah, no that M6. <laughs> exactly the dreaded M6. Yeah, I could yeah, jump yeah. on that, no problem. Get off at junction six or get off at 10, wherever I'm going, 15. Um, yeah. but now it's kind of got back to normal. But as we see now, we, we're just seeing the rise of this this kind of I'm now the policing of this, you know, and it's yeah. It's uh, but that but they have but that's what they got. It's grass on thy neighbor, you know what I mean? If you see your fucking neighbor having more than six people showing the police, like what's that all about, man? How are you gonna fucking snitch on your neighbor? Like well, paint the picture, Liam. So your neighbor snitches on you, quote unquote, and calls the police. What kind of yeah. relationship are you gonna have with your neighbor after that? Exactly. Exactly <laughs> that. That fucking same hatred divide that they seem to be putting in place with everything. It's the, it's the weirdest thing, but we just need more people to be opening up their eyes and their ears and saying, look, we're not having this. We're not buying it anymore. Whatever you're selling, we don't want it. Yeah. I just... think it's, part, I mean, yeah, look, I'm, not des- I'm not denying there's, there's definitely a virus around, you know what I mean? I've, I've, I know people that have caught it and, and I know people that have been suffering from it and people that have lost their lives from it. So I'm not saying there's no virus, but I think the, 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 the objective now is past, is it's gone into something different. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense what they're making us do for what this virus is. Yeah. And what it's doing, like, I don't know, 99% survival rate or something like that, is it not? 99.98%. <laughs> well, there you go. So I think that speaks for itself. So I think definitely now there's definitely something else happening on the cards that they don't want us to know about. People know there's something up. And they get called their mad conspiracy theorists. Like yeah. that. So I haven't read any conspiracy theories. I'm just putting things together in my fucking own head. And it's like two plus two does not fucking come to six. Like exactly. something, something is not right. Yeah, the, the equations do not add up. Kind nah, of. Man. <laughs> nah, so. But like, you just have to do, you just have to look after yourselves. You know, you look after your family, look after your loved ones. And I think that's the only thing we can do now. Definitely. <laughs> yes, definitely. And and I've said this right at the start in March um, when I when I touched this this um, situation. 
utilize this time the best that you can. It's a terrible situation. There's lots of people who have lost their jobs, you know, who have got reduced hours and stuff. Maybe pick up a book. Yeah. Maybe tap into your creative side. Maybe you thought to yourself, you know what? I've always wanted to be my own business owner, making clothes, for instance. Why don't you try and do it now? Exactly. Now is the time to grasp this uh, disadvantage what everyone has and turn it into a positive man. Just make something of this shitty situation. Mm. You can't Agreed. blame other people. You can't be, oh, it's their fault. It's that person's fault. It's this one. This is happening because they're doing it. It's down to you at the end of the day. Like, it's you that's fucking doing it. It's not the other person. It's your your responsibility. It's your life. It's you that's doing it. Like Waiting yeah. for somebody else to tell you when you can go out and fucking if you can go see your son or you can go see your dad or whatever, you know? I mean, and another thing which hasn't really been touched on in, in the whole of this zombie apocalypse is the mental effect, the effect on the mental health of people. Yeah. Fair play was at Liverpool. Yes. Manchester. Liverpool. They fucking, they stood there and stood fair play to them and now they've got all the gyms open up and they, and they needed to, like, mm. At the end of the day, man, you, we need the gym. Like, it's, it, it, for that mental health reason, right? We do this because it's, things are not right anyway. Yeah. So we have to keep doing what we're doing to keep fucking on a level head. Exactly. Take that away. What have you got? You had a fucking uprising in what? Um, domestic abuse. Yeah, exactly. You have a fucking more people, mental health problems. You have all of these issues for what? Are you closing the fucking world down for a, night, for a disease that's got 99.98% fucking survival rate? Yeah. Right. It's a fair, a fair play to them for making a stand. And they, but how, many, how much fines did they get in total? Was it six thousand or something? It was no, it was double figures. I'm sure it was up to uh, I'm sure it was it was crazy. Right. And it's good the GoFundMe, that was actually what fucking GoFundMe was, was yes. paying for. Pay yes. these fines, pay these fines. I'll tell you what, the what's left in the kitty will bang over for anyone else that needs a fine. Community, community, yeah. they can see making the them. value. Taking a, making a boat, making the best out of a bad situation. Totally. I mean, let's not get it. Let's not get at, get it get it twisted. How vital exercise is, and especially with the with the aging population, with the obesity, yep. with the non-active children that's going on. We need exactly. the gyms open. We need open spaces with gym equipment. Every flipping where, man, so people can get out there and be active, man. Yep. Exactly that. You know, yeah. stay in your house, fucking bullshit. Nah. But so like Hawaii, right? That's how backwards this is, right? So Hawaii, yeah, they changed all the rules, right? That you was you couldn't sit out on the beach, right? You couldn't have a towel beside you and, and sit out on the beach, but you can go jump in the water. But if you as soon as you come out of the water, you've got to get off the beach. There's no socializing on the water on the beach. <laughs> the you <laughs> See, it's that virus. It doesn't like yeah, the water. Yeah, it doesn't like water, but it likes sand. Like fucking sunbathing and you've took a spot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you see, you, you ne- we're, 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 we're getting it. We're getting to the bones of it. This yeah, virus exactly clearly that. likes the sun. He likes yeah. the sand, surf, all the rest of it, yeah. but he don't like the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking stupid, man. It's the maddest. It's absolutely the maddest. So let's get back to some of this, Um, to your career. <clears throat> And Bellator, before we get to your career, actually, um, as we discussed earlier, 30 fighters have been now are no longer on the yeah. roster of, of, um, of Bellator. Some, based upon some of the articles I've read, they've said that a lot of them are on losing streaks. But as I've looked at some of the names that they've, they've um, you know, released, and some of them aren't on, like, multiple fight losing streaks and there's some notable names that they've, they've kind of said, you know what, see you later. Yeah, it really was. Uh, it was a mass fucking dump, wasn't it, really? I saw that. I was fucking glad I never saw my name on there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, so, I mean, what what, what does your future hold? What, what, what are we planning now? Obviously, we need to... Um, it's very tricky <laughs> with what's going on, but and your injury and stuff. So, what's the 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 plans moving forward for yourself? So, the, after all these surgeries, uh, I was going back and doing the check for the doctor, um, and, and I'm like, look, I was like, realistically, when can I start fighting again? And he didn't answer me. 
So I, was like, I asked him four times different ways, when can I start getting punched in the face? And he wouldn't give me an answer. And I was like, how about by my birthday? He's like, when's that? I said, October. So well, it should be all right by then. All right. But what I think that the doctor didn't realize, like, that I have to do a three-month fight camp before that. So he was like saying, October, you might be all right. All right. It's two years, basically, for the hip, my injury to heal. Whoa. That's what he said. Two fucking years. Like, the worst fucking injury ever mm. I've ever, ever had in my life. Anyone who's had a broken jaw will know what this is like. And to have it, to be wired shut for six months and, and like, it, it's, it's up here that gets yeah. fucking tough, mate. Like, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to have conversations with people. No one understood what I was saying. Like, I had to write on my phone for people to, to, to understand me and hear me. And then they'd, just, they'd read it and it was not said right. So yeah. I just fucking didn't bother talking to anyone. I just did what I needed to do and got through what I needed to get through. But when the doctor was saying, like, two years, now... I, I, am, I am going to make a run for it, right? I'm going to go straight back in that cage and I fucking swear to God I'm going to fucking hurt some people, right? Mm. But I'm not going to go in there and push this too soon because I don't want to get my jaw wired up again. Yeah. So, and, and I know now that, like, it, it's coming up to the end and it feels, six months ago, it feels so much different to what it feel, feels like now. Um, stronger. I feel it's more connected to my face, if you know what I mean, right? For the last year, it's felt like my fucking jaw's been swinging in the wind. Okay. So now it, it actually feels part of me again, and it's like, okay, I can. Yeah. I'm moving it around a bit now, and was so it, is it, that down to some of the the nerve damage with the surgery? I guess as well. Mate, nerves fucked in my fucking face. So yeah, like, yeah, that got all tangled up and demolished and all sorts. So sure. yeah, I, it's all yeah. It's just you, you I, don't know, need... I, I just don't, you get any of those uh, tingling sensation parts, um, areas in, in, in that surgery area? In that yeah, non- yeah, yeah. It's, it's still like a tingly, like it's, that feeling will never go away. Apparently, so it's just I've got, oh, now I've got to get used to it and, and adapt now to yeah. like, my my injury. But um, I finally managed to get a hold of a, a, a mouth mouth guard. I'm, I'm that's getting made. I had to get a 4D scan of my face and get that sent off so uh so hopefully the the mouthpiece should turn up within the next few days so we'll go from there excellent excellent right, so i start letting people throw punches at me in the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah this is it that first cracking like oh, I really yeah. like, don't close your eyes i can't help it <laughs> yeah. keep them open man guide your grill duck bob weave <laughs> Exactly, exactly that. It's like my boy can start throwing punches at my mate. He's like, yeah, he's got a fourteen-year-old son, keen as mustard boxer. Yeah. I was like, oh. I was like, let me let him fucking swing some punches at me and see how he goes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he doesn't hit very hard, so that's all right then. <laughs> <laughs> it's so he says. Oh no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, Make sure that that's not videotaped, so it doesn't come up on no blooper reel or something like that on YouTube. <laughs> Security cameras will be off. The gym will be closed. Like, right, let's go. Let's go. You're all beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Good old fashioned lacking. Yeah, man. Just crack on. <laughs> Keep hitting. <laughs> definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, Liam, you you got anything else you wanna you wanna touch before we um before we wrap up? No, I think it's just been nice having a chat with someone. To be honest with you. <laughs> Honors, man. Honors. It's uh, it's always great yeah. speaking with yourself. You're um, as most fighters, you 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 your fighters are quite honest and open. Um, and I enjoy having having conversation with fighters. Um, yeah. it's one of my favorite sports as well, mixed martial arts. So um, it's good fun, man. I've missed it so much. Definitely, definitely. My last two questions for you: Have you had fun? When? Today. Yeah. I always have fun. <laughs> Excellent. And my very last one is, I clearly know your name. Um, tell me who you are without mentioning your name. I'm the first Englishman to win a world title over in America, an MMA world record. Um, one of the first signees for Bellator from England. Um, former world champion. All round good, decent bloke, really. 
That's it with a big smile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, how can people get hold of you? Um, for all your social media, Liam. So my social media, so Instagram is Liam McGeary one. Facebook is Liam McGeary. Um, Twitter is Liam underscore McGeary. I don't really use that too much, but um, but it's still on there. Yeah, I think that's the only social media I've got. So I don't good. bother wearing it. Yeah, snap, snap. Or... yeah, exactly. Yeah. TikTok and all this. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't fuck around with that. Anymore. That's what I mean. Twitter, Twitter, no, but Instagram, just because I like, I like to take pictures. It's easy to send a picture. You know what I mean? Exactly. Picture. Share it to Facebook. Oh, that's it. Link it all up. That's it. Twitter. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much the same. I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit more active on Twitter. To be fair, I'm trying, but I just don't find it as engaging as um instagram yeah yeah i, I like the, the pictures said pictures just say everything you know what i mean so a thousand yeah, words. I, I, do, I do like that yeah i like that one definitely it's been an honor as usual thank you very much for stopping by make sure everybody likes comments subscribes and most definitely shares if you're not subscribed to liam's page on instagram do get over there um and follow yeah.